Hi everybody. I miss you guys so much this week. I'm sorry we weren't able to get together. Um, but Cindy and I are both on the mend and we're feeling much better today. So hopefully we'll be through all this next week. We'll be back to normal. I uh, just wanted to share something really short and quick with you this morning that God gave me. In Luke chapter 19, Jesus told a story to his disciples. He told the story of a man was going to a, a far country. He was a man of noble birth. He was a man that was destined for big things. And he, had, he was going to a far country to be made king. And uh, he was moving on up, as they say. And uh, so he gathered his servants together before he went to this far country to be made king. And he told his servants, before I go, I have some money I want to give you because I need you to take this money and do something with it while I'm gone. Now, it's interesting because in just a few weeks, Jesus would be having this conversation with his disciples again when he would be explaining to them that he was going to prepare a place for them. He was going to, to make a better place, a bigger place, a much grander place. And he said, before I go, I, there's something I need to leave with you. And so the man, before he left, gathered his 10 of his servants together and he gave each one of them, it says, Amina. Now what's interesting about this is Amina was actually uh, a measurement that was uh, the equivalent of about three months worth of labor. So Amina was actually almost a measurement of part of somebody's life. And so as I was reading this story this week, I, I was struck by the fact that, that the Mina was actually, you, you, you could almost say it was, it was the, the measurement of somebody's life. And uh, we've all been given a Mina. A Mina, the Mina that you've been given is, is everything that God's given you, your life, your talent, your ability, your situation, the family you were born into, the way you were raised, your personality, everything that makes you, you, is the Mina that God gave you. And everybody's Mina is different. We were, we were told over and over again in the scriptures not to compare ourselves to each other, not to, not to, to look at somebody else and compare our life to their life. We do it all the time, even though we were told not to. But the truth of the matter is, everybody's Mina is a little bit different. There's nobody else just like you. There's nobody else that was born into your situation exactly the way you were. There's no one else that has your personality, exactly. There's no one else that has your uh, set of gifts and talents. All of these things, all of these uh, things make up what, what Jesus was referring to as the Mina. And you've all been given a Mina. You've all been given a life to live. So the man went to the far country and uh, while he was there, he was dealing with some rebellion and some situations that needed cleaned up. And he was actually preparing the place. He was preparing the way. And when he came back, after he had been made king in this far country, he came back and he called his servants together. And when you read the story, it's interesting. He calls them together and he says, I need to see what you did with your mina. Now it's interesting, he didn't ask, he didn't say, I need to see the Mina that I gave you. He didn't come back to, to examine the Mina that, he, that was given them. He said, I wanna see what you did with it. I wanna see what you accomplished or what your Mina 
did while I was gone. What did you do with it? And what God is saying to us today is Jesus is coming back. And when he comes back, he's going to be asking us, what did you do with the mina that was given to you? What did you do with your life? What did you accomplish with it? He's not, we spend so much time trying to um, sort of build up our life or to, to make our life look attractive to the world or to ourselves or, or to somebody else. And we act like that's what Jesus is going to ask when, we, when he comes back. He's, he's going to be examining us. He's going to be looking at us. He's going to say, what, what, how did you build yourself up? What, what do you have to show? And we spend too much time accumulating things that really aren't going to matter. Because when we move into the next kingdom, how much money we have in our bank account or what kind of a car we drove or how big of a house we lived in or how many friends we had, how famous we were, none of those things are really going to matter in the next kingdom, in the real kingdom. The man, when he was going to the far country, was, was preparing a new place, a different place. A whole, a whole different set of rules were going to apply in the new kingdom. And so when Jesus comes back, he's going to ask this question. What did you do with the mina that I gave you? What did you do with the life that I gave you? What did you accomplish with it? What did you, how did you uh, use it to further the next kingdom? The Apostle Paul, in the book of 2 Timothy, when he was nearing the end of his life, told his friend Timothy, he said, I'm, I'm almost at the end. He said, and I feel like my life is being poured out like a libation or like a like a sacrifice like a like a water bottle and you sort of get the feeling from what Paul said that he knew the end was near he knew that his life was almost over and and he he likened his life his mina to a, a bottle of water that had been had been sort of used up and and he he had it was the last few drops, almost like the, the water bottle had tipped over and, and it was the last few drops of his life were being, were being poured out. It's interesting that he wasn't, he wasn't talking about the things he accumulated. He wasn't talking about how, how well he looked or how good he looked, but he said, my life is actually being poured out. And it's a different philosophy, it's a different idea than the, what the world teaches us because the world teaches us that we should, we should accumulate things. We should, we should build ourselves up. How much did you accumulate? How much did you, did you gather to yourself? And Paul said, my life is successful because it's being poured out. In other words, he said, I fought the good fight. I finished the race. And I'm getting ready to move on to the next kingdom. And I'm glad that as I near the end, there's nothing left of me. And I think about how God has given us a life. And so many times we, have, we spend that life, that precious gift, that precious mina that God has given us, trying to collect things, trying to build it up, trying to... To, to make it look bigger than what it is. And when Jesus comes back, he's not coming back and asking you, what does your mina look like? But rather, he's asking the question, what did you do with it? What did you accomplish with it? What do you have to show for the mina that I gave you? So when, when, the, when the man came back and he called his 10 servants together, the first one came in and he said, Master, he said, I don't have the mina that you gave me. He said, I took that mina and I invested it and I worked with it and I turned that mina into 10 minas. I turned that life 
into 10 life. I multiplied it. And the master said to the servant, well done, because you did what I would have done, because you were in agreement with my philosophy, with my way of thinking, with my idea, you will be given a place of honor. You will be given 10 cities to serve in the new kingdom, 10 cities to be ruler over and to rule over because your heart is in alignment with my heart. The second servant came in and the master said, what did you do with the mina that I gave you? The second servant said, master, I don't have the mina that you gave me. I, I took it and I invested it and I used it and I, I turned that one mina into five minas. And the master said to the servant, well done, because your heart is in alignment with my heart and because your philosophy and what you did is in alignment with what I would have done, I am going to entrust you with five cities in the new kingdom. And so all the way down through the 10 servants, he went and each one came in and gave a report of what they did or what they accomplished with the life of the mina that they were given. And finally, the last guy comes in and the, ser and the master asked the servant, what did you do with the mina that I gave you? And the servant said, I knew master that you were coming back and that you were gonna ask me about my mina and I was afraid to, to waste it and so what I did was I took the mina that you gave me and I wrapped it all up in a cloth and I stuck it away under my mattress and I hid it where nobody could find it, kept it safe and I'm proud to say here's the mina that you gave me and it's all bright and shiny brand new, it's, it has a, any use on it and I'll, you'll be happy to know that I kept it safe while you were gone. And the master turned to the, to the men that were standing beside him. He said, this man is not in agreement with me and he needs to be cast out. He needs to be thrown away and take this mina that I gave him and give it to the man that already has 10 minas. And the lesson here is our life wasn't given to us for us to preserve and protect and keep it safe. Our mina, our life, was given to us so that we could spend it, so that we could pour it out like the Apostle Paul said. When we near the end of our life, hopefully, ideally, as we near the end of our life, we'll, like the Apostle Paul say, my mina, my life, is being poured out. The very last few drops are being poured out. And when those few drops are poured out, I'll be done and I'll be ready to go. God gave me a simple illustration to illustrate what I want to what I'm talking about today. Picture this as being the mina that God gave you. It's small, there's not much to it. It's insignificant, there's no label on it, and there's there's not much here but Every one of us has been given a life. Every one of us has been given a mean, and this is, this is what God gave you. And so all along the way, what happens is we um, have opportunity to pour our life out on other people. We have people that come into our life, and they're like this bottle of water. And when they come in, they need something. Every day of your life, you're gonna come across people that are in need of stuff. And it might be something simple, it might be something small, but it'll be within your mina. It'll be within your life that you have something to give them. It might be just a smile, it might be a word of encouragement, it might be money, it might be uh, somebody that's sick and they just need somebody to pray over them or pray with them. Might be somebody, a loved one that, that, that is dealing with a, a, a death in the family and they need, just need somebody to hold their hand. And so every day you're gonna have opportunity, God's gonna bring people into your life and what God is waiting for and what God is doing is he's given you the opportunity for you to pour into those people. And just like that, you can pour your life, your mina, into somebody else.
Notice the difference. Now it's interesting, the color is the color of blood because the Bible says that blood is where the life resides. And when we get to heaven, it's going to be life that's the coin of heaven. It's going to be life that is the value of what's in heaven. And so God every day sends people into your life. And every day you have the opportunity to pour a little bit more of your life out. Now notice, oh, drop the lid. <laughs> Every day, when people come into your life, you might be thinking, well, I'm waiting to use my Mina to build something big. God's given me big dreams. He's given me a big goal. I want to accomplish a lot. And you're waiting for your dream, your, your big goal, your big thing, to accumulate and while you're doing that people are coming by your life and if you're too busy looking way out over the over the future waiting for your thing what's going to happen is these people are going to be coming into your life and they're going to be going back out they're coming in and they're going out it might only be a few minutes it might only be a few days that you have opportunity to pour your life into somebody else's life and make a difference. Might only be a few a few uh, minutes that they actually need something from you. And so many times we get so caught up in our life that we're busy wondering what am I supposed to be doing? What am I supposed to be accomplishing? And all you need to do is you need to be aware of the people that are coming into your life that are need something. Notice something else. Sometimes when you pour your life into somebody else, you wonder, where did they go? What happened to my investment? I poured my life into them. I spent time with them. I poured my mina into them. And you can get so caught up in trying to make sure that every drop of your life is accounted for and every drop is effective but meanwhile, while you're looking over here wondering what happened to your, what happened to the investment that you made, what's happening is other lives are coming in and going out. Other lives are coming in and going out. So always be aware of what's in front of you. Always be aware of the people that God's bringing into your life. They might not be significant. They might not be all that important. They might not be big, influential people, but they're people that have needs. They're people that have something, they have a desperate need in their life. And God has given you something to pour into their life and make a difference. Might not be a big thing, might be just a small thing, might be just a few drops, but notice the difference, how it changes their life and turns them into something else. And so every day, people come and people go. Now notice what's happening is you can't do this without pouring out your life. Every time you give of yourself, every time you pour yourself out into somebody else's life, your mina gets a little bit less. It gets a little more empty. There's less of you today than there was tomorrow. But the question is, what are you saving yourself for? What are you holding on to? Because there's going to come a day when Jesus is going to come back and he's going to ask you, did you pour out your life? Did you invest in the people that I sent your way? And so day after day, week after week, sometimes it might be just somebody that needs a small thing from you. It might be God is sending, that's why, that's why we should never resist a generous impulse. When God gives you the opportunity to invest in somebody, realize that those moments can be very fleeting. You might only get a minute or two. When God speaks to your heart and drops in your heart and he says, 
There's somebody right there that you can invest in. There's somebody right there that I've sent into your, into your uh, sphere, into your circle for you to invest in. Too much of the time we complain about the fact that there's so many needy people in the world. It seems like sometimes that, that everywhere you turn, there's somebody that needs something. There's somebody that is, that is, that is lacking. And sometimes we, we get so frustrated and so weary of always being the one giving, always being the one putting out. And sometimes it seems like you give and you give and you give and you never get anything back for it. And sometimes you, you feel like, uh, oh, there's another, there's another needy person. There's another needy child. There's someone there that needs something. And so you, you pour out and you give and you sacrifice. And then that person, after, sometimes they don't even say thank you. Sometimes you don't even know if your investment made any difference. And maybe they're only in your sphere, in your, in your circle, even in within your sight for just a, a short amount of time. And before you know it, they're gone. And, and so you spend your whole life, and one after another, people come through. And one after another, you are given the opportunity. And you have this small life, this small mina. It's not very much, but yet God has given you the opportunity to pour out to invest, to speak to people, to share your mina with them. Now notice, after this is all happening, your mina is almost dry. Your mina is almost empty. And one day soon, one day soon, probably sooner than, than, than anybody knows, your life, your mina, is going to be gone. It's going to be over. Now, the days that you've been given are numbered. And God knows that number. And God has given you exactly the amount of mina that you need to do what he wants you to do. And someday soon, we're going to stand before the master. And the master's going to call us in. And he's not going to ask you, how did you, how did your mina compare to your neighbor's mina? How did your neighbor's, uh, how much did you do compared to what your neighbor did? He's simply going to ask you this question. What did you do with the mina that I gave you? What did you do with the life that I gave you? I want to show you this last thing and then I'm done. God's given you this, one mina, one life. It might not seem like much. And you might look at others and say, oh, I don't have that much ability. I don't have that much talent. I don't have any special gifts. I don't have a lot of money. I don't have a lot of education. I don't have uh, a lot of this or that. And your life might feel and seem like this small, simple little thing. But if you take and you pour your life into others, this is what can happen. Look at what this one small mina turned into. This is how the servant turned one mina into ten minas. This is what God wants us to do. He wants us to take our small, simple life that he's given us, pour it out, Give it away. And it can turn into, when you get to heaven, you'll be rewarded for what you accomplished with your small mina. Thank you.